Um, so the first thing I'm going to be doing for this demo, just going to be going from and then pressing control space. And then that brings up everything in the standard library. Um, so we're looking in algorithm. And then if you don't see these little hints at the right here, you can press control space to bring them up. So we're going to get functional and then import. Uh, and I want to get vectorized. So we'll go over what that does in a second. We'll create a main function. And then for I, uh, I'm going to purposely do something wrong here to show you that you, uh, you can bring up these errors up on the same line. Um, so if you haven't seen this before, this is a really cool extension called error lens. Um, so if you go into the extensions, uh, it's really cool because it shows you exactly what you're doing wrong and you get fast feedback as you're going. You can fix it as you go. So we'll go for I in range, fix up that, gets rid of it, and then we can just print it out. Now I run this in my terminal and you can see it's doing a loop, so nine different items. Um, and the way I'm running this really fast is I've set up a key bind. So if you go into keyboard, keyboard shortcuts and you type in Mojo, you can bring up all the things that you can bind keys to. Um, so I just put it to Alt M. And then what we want to do now is have a look at vectorize. So if we bring up the doc hint for this, it'll show you uh, the signature. Um, so I'll go over this in a practical way, so I won't talk about the description. But the first thing we want to do is pass in this SIMD width. Um, so in Mojo, anything between square brackets is a parameter. So that means it's compile time known. And anything between normal braces is an argument. So it can be compile time known or it can be a runtime known value. So we'll put in four to start. And then we also need to pass in a function or a closure. Um, so I'll call this closure. And then to start with, we'll just print an empty line and pass it in. Now the extension is telling us that uh, we're doing something wrong here. So it expected fun with a parameter of int and an argument of type int. So we'll put that in there now. We'll call it L's int and then I int. Uh, and let's have a look at what it is. So putting L's elements at and then I. Um, so if we run this now, we'll do nine as well and run it. And you can see instead of doing nine instructions, now it's doing three loops. Um, so four elements for the first loop, four for the second, and then the leftover is one. So there's one leftover after those two. Um, something else I'm going to do as well, because we're going to keep reusing that nine. I'll just do an alias. So alias size type int equals nine. Size. And then put the same thing in there. Um, so you might be wondering, what is the purpose of this? Like, why would we want to do this if you haven't done anything with vectorize before? So to show you that, I'm going to bring in another thing called from memory.unsafe import dtype pointer. Sorry, I missed a thing there. dtype pointer. So let p equal dtype pointer. And then we'll give it a type. So you can see here, this is like NumPy. Uh, you have all the different standards here. So you can see what types we're using. And we want to just get the in 16 and then allocate that to the heap. So uh, we'll put in the size. So we're allocating nine elements of size uh, 16 to the heap. And then we can use that inside here. So we'll store the elements. SIMD store. Um, and yeah, as you're going through, you can look at these hints to show exactly what it's doing. So it needs a width, uh, offset, and a value. Um, so the width goes in as a parameter. So we'll go SIMD store and then put in L's. So that's coming in from here. And you can see we're going to put four elements at that position. So we'll go I, and then we'll put the same I like, uh, so we're putting it at position zero, and then we'll put the value of zero as well. So you can see what it looks like. Now we're getting this error up here. This is telling us that we can't capture things inside here unless it's a parameter function. Um, so I'll just get rid of this loop. You can see this P here, we're using this inside the closure. So now that we're doing this, we need to mark this with a decorator, same par parameter. Um, so now we can pass this function in as a parameter. And if you want to get more details about what all this means, highly recommend checking out the programming manual. It goes into a lot of details about all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll just make sure it's working, which it is. And now we want to have a look at what it looks like. So we'll go p dot simd load, uh, and then we'll get everything. So we'll pass in size and position zero. Now this is telling us that the value is unused, so we want to print it out. Uh, so we'll go like this, Oop. print it. 
And now you can see the vector at the end here. So the first four elements are all zero. Uh, the second four are four, and then the last leftover one is eight. So instead of doing nine in, uh, loops with all those CPU instructions, we're just doing three loops. Um, so it's a, a lot less instructions for the CPU. Um, so this is what people mean when they talk about vectorize. They're, they're speeding up the uh, algorithm. Um, but at the moment, this is not really optimized for any kind of hardware. So there's something else we can do here um, to make things so we can experiment a little bit more. I'll put another alias in and just change this. Um, so I've just made an alias with the type so that we can change that. And then the other thing we want is to figure out how many of these int 16s we can fit inside our SIMD register. So for that, we can go into sys.info and then import. And if you type in SIMD, you'll bring up all the different things to do with SIMD. And we want SIMD width of. Now we can go alias and else equals uh, SIMD width of. And we want to pass in the type. And I'll just print that out so you can see what it is. So you can see we can fit eight of these int 16s into our SIMD register on this computer that I'm on now. Um, so I'm going to chuck that in here now. And so instead of four and uh, three different loops, we're just doing two loops. The first one is eight zeros, and then the leftover one at the end. Um, cool. So we can increase that a little bit. We'll go to 64. And you can see we're doing uh, like eight loops now. And you can see the SIMD vector at the end here. And then if we decrease the size of this type, so we go int 8, then it's a lot less instructions. So the smaller the data type, uh, the more efficient your algorithm is going to be. Um, so hopefully this teaches you a little bit about what vectorization is and also shows you how to use the extension. Um, there's some other cool things you can do, like if you want to put in your own uh, doc hints, you can, and it's just normal markdown. So you can go, this is a comment. And then you can do uh, like little code blocks as well. Let i equal 10, print 10. And then when you have a look inside here, then you'll see the, the uh, markdown. So it's a nice markdown experience. Yeah, and just uh, one last thing. So last thing I'll do is um, these quick fixes. So if you have a look here, when you hover over things that the uh, LSP knows how to fix, um, you get these little light symbols. So you can press it and then put it in and it will fix it up for you. Um, so we'll add more of those over time. So yeah, keep checking back and we'll keep adding helpful things in there. Um, and yeah, that's it. Back to you, Shashank. I, I know you were, uh, you wanted to show the uh, visual power of Visual Studio extension, but uh, you actually showed some very cool features in Mojo itself, right? Like being able to use SIMD and like, you know, vectorized code. That's, uh, it's not easy folks to do it <laughs> do in, in, in other languages. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Like if you have a look at C++, doing like a similar thing is very difficult. You got to, yeah, learn a lot about uh, like all the intrins intrinsics and stuff like that. So Mojo makes it really nice and ergonomic. That's awesome. And um, uh, you were using a couple of keyboard shortcuts, I think, Jack, to run, uh, 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 right, to run the, the script that you had. Uh, yeah. There's also a cool button on the top right. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll show you that. So you just press this little play button, and it will do the same thing. Uh, if you don't like keyboard shortcuts, then you can, yeah, you can just press this. Yeah, and the... Uh, the home, the extension page on the marketplace has some pretty cool uh, um, guide that that you wrote for uh, you know keyboard shortcuts and all that, right? The, yeah, yeah, we'll keep updating that as we add features. So keep checking back on there. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think this highlights the uh, the point that the usability is equally important, right? A powerful language is good, but having a good ID uh, support and extension will help you be more productive, especially when learning a um, language with syntax that you may or may not be familiar with, right? Um, Mojo is a new programming language. Uh, that's awesome. Um, again, like feel free to drop in questions and we'll we'll try to answer. Uh, um, uh, oh, this here's a good question. I think I think you should address this, uh, Jack. Someone's asking, and I had the same question too. The difference between the square bracket and the and the the parenthesis thing, right? Um, it's new to Mojo for a Python user, right? You yeah. Take that? Yeah, so in Python, uh, argument and parameter can be used kind of interchangeably. 
Um, they have like a slight difference, but in Mojo, it's very specific. So a parameter means that it's compile time known value or a type. And then an argument in the normal braces means that it's an argument. So it's just a value that can be known at runtime or compile time. Right. So yeah, the square brackets where uh, Jack added all the um, the type type information, so compile time information. Awesome. 